Hey, I'm Oz Quags. We're at Hidden Track Studios, my studio here in Folkestone. Uh, I'm down here with Audient today, looking at the new ASP800, the uh, Audient 8 channel mic pre with variable tone controls on the first two channels and uh, just giving a demonstration of how it can be used for recording drums. Okay, so uh, the first thing I'm gonna be doing is getting the gain levels on the kick, snare and overheads. Um, obviously, the phase relationship between these mics are really critical and when I uh, do drums, I pretty much base the phase uh, off the overheads to start with. So I get them and then I kind of making sure that everything works with them. It's a really important thing. The overheads uh, are set up in a space pair over the kit um, with a measured kind of distance from the snare drum. So hopefully the snare should be centered. But having said that with mics and preamps and stuff, sometimes you do get a little bit of a kind of variance in levels. So um, I will be kind of making sure that, the, you know, using the gains to basically balance that to make sure our snare's central in the uh, stereo image. Um, so I'm going to get Joe to start playing some snare drum. And uh, the first thing I'll be doing is putting the Phantom Power on the channel, keeping it muted so that it can ramp up the mic and then start having a listen. So can you start playing some snare drum for me, please, Joe? So I've obviously got the channel muted still at the moment. Uh, putting the Phantom Power in and I'm just going to be starting to get a level before we do anything. So it's not looking too bad. I'll bring these in, we can have a listen. Again, this is a bit of a rough guess at the moment because obviously when we actually start playing, our levels are gonna change a little bit. Drummers actually tend to play a bit harder when they're playing. So this is just a kind of guesstimate. Um, what is worth noting is that um, I like to have my audio peak at maybe minus 12, no more than that. With 24-bit recording, you don't actually need to have it much, much kind of louder. Uh, you've got loads, plenty of headroom there, so the noise isn't so much of an issue. So that's sounding, uh, at least on these headphones, sounding roughly balanced to me. And the meters look like they're kind of coming in pretty even. So let's have a listen to the whole kit before we do anything, just through those overheads. Cool, can you just play around your whole kit for me quickly? So what I'm, what I'm listening to now is basically just the kind of whole image of the kit, making sure I can kind of... Yeah, so when you did that tom roll, you can hear that the uh, rack toms nicely and the floor toms positioned as if we were sat behind the kit. I was panning drummer's perspective. So um, that feels pretty good to me. Again, this is just a kind of starting point at the moment. As we can see there, we're getting uh, creeping up in level a bit like I kind of assumed would happen. That's not too bad at the moment, we're still kind of minus 12-ish. Okay, so let's, let's start, start bringing some close mics. Great, can we just, uh, just have kick drum now, please? So I'm just gonna mute off the overheads and start listening to the kick drum. So this is a 421 inside. And we're going into the, the retro channel. So again, bringing the level up to get a decent level. Okay, so we're gonna start having a look at the, um, what the uh, MOSFET drive and the magnetic drive, the HMX and the uh, iron is gonna do to our sound and what we can do with it really. Um, it might be worth noting that Again, it, have it, if it were a kind of actual tracking session, I probably would be changing the mic out possibly and trying different mics on that, but this is just for purpose of demonstration. I'm just gonna stick with this now. Um, so let's have a look. So we can kind of hear that the um, using the HMX, we can kind of smooth out that transient a little bit and get a little bit more bloom on the back end of that tail of that drum, which is quite cool. Obviously it gets a lot fatter as well. What is nice, and I do really like that they've kept in this, is that even cranking it, we're getting a pretty similar kind of level on it. It's not, it doesn't really change the gain staging, which I think is a really clever touch, um, because usually in bringing in more kind of additional circuits, of, certainly with gain in them, you would expect it to get louder and kind of mess up your your original levels, but this doesn't, which is I think is a cool trick. So we'll have a listen to the uh, iron as well. 
it's worth noting that I generally, tr if possible, try and have kind of transformers on the mics. I quite like having co more coloured sounds being recorded because um, I think it gives you more, you know, kind of sets a precedent of the tone you're trying to capture early on. You hear it getting real aggressive down there. I love this iron button. You hear even just at low levels like that. You really can bring out some detail, that beta hit. And get really angry up that end. Nice. Okay. So I'm just going to bring these in at what I think is a kind of nice point. I quite like the low level of the, the sparkle, as it's called on here, of the arms, basically just kind of tickling the transformer, getting a little bit of that air off that. And again, not going crazy with the low end on this, but just kind of bringing it in to kind of colour the tone a little bit of that kick drum. Um, let's carry that down a bit. So what I'm going to do now is listen with the overheads. So we can start checking phase on those. So if we listen carefully, you can hear that actually with the phase reverse in, the kick drum gets deeper to me. Sounds a little bit less powerful in the bottom end. And we are gain, almost gaining an octave down the lower register. So. To me, that was how I would have it. Keep the low end in as powerful as possible. Obviously, the balance between the mics aren't set yet. Just, everything's at unity on the desk. Um, so we're just listening to purely the levels coming in. Yeah, and double check my levels here. Where are we at? Just take that down just a touch, because no doubt Joey will just push a little bit higher. I don't know what he plays a bit. OK. Great. Can we go back to the snare again, please? So I'm going to mute that kick channel. I'm going to mute the overheads and bring in the snare. It's just a single 57 on top. Again, usually I might add maybe a bottom mic or a side mic, but again, for the purpose of this, I think the top mic is just fine. So I'm going to start playing around with the uh, MOSFET drive and the magnetic drive, the HMX and the iron, just to see, see what we can get going on. Definitely getting some kind of lower mid build up on pushing that a bit harder, which I quite like. I think a bit of saturation on snare really helps sit in the mix. It kind of helps control those transients instantly. Bringing in that iron, you can hear that top end just clean up a little. It becomes really apparent, I think, on the snare. Sounds like a different mic almost. Just keep pushing and see what happens. I mean, that's a nice balance. Like before on the kick, we know it gets quite aggressive up the, further up in the range of the iron. So I'm kind of just trying to pick the nice point between that airiness we get at the lower levels and a bit of grunt. So I'm favoring the kind of one, one o'clock position. Sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. Just sweeping through to see where the point I like it the best is. Nice. Okay, so like before, bring in the uh, bring in the overheads and see see what the phase is doing with those. So I'm just going to flip the top mic and see what happens. Instantly, hear the centre image come in. Get fatter. Obviously, the balance between the two, well, the three mics that we're listening to now, the top snare and the overheads is a little out of whack, but again, just for the for phase, it's pretty pretty apparent that we're uh, that we're in there. Okay, great. 
and go back to kick drum for me, please. Well, now I'm going to have a look at the kick out mic, which is a uh, homemade sub kick device. Now these tend to have a pretty juicy output. So the first thing I do is put the pad in. So it's just pure sub down there, really. Not, not the most pleasant of sounds, but again, it's a kind of point of it is to be blended in with the kick drum in mic to kind of add some low end, especially as the 421 isn't actually a uh, kick mic per se. So we can kind of maybe not have the low end that you need. So this is just another option. So bring in the kick in mic and we'll see how they play together. So what I'm going to do quickly now is just uh, see what the, um, the phase relationship is like between the two mics. Again, just flipping this in and out. Okay, so clearly we need to flip the phase on that. You can do this with these three channels. Obviously, you can do it in software after the fact, but as these come in on the uh, line-ins on my desk, I'm just going to use my desk to flip the phase. And you can hear then again, it's got a lot deeper and more punchy. So when we kind of bring it through, you can hear that low end getting bigger and bigger. Again, nice to have that option. So what I like to do right now is really just kind of have a look, kicks down hi hats and see how see how it's feeling overall. Cool, do you want to play kick snare and hi hat beat for me, please? So this is with no processing other than the uh, the kind of colour circuits in the first two channels on the audio. This is just uh, straight from mic the preamp, really. So you can really see how those colour colours can really bring forward that kick and snare, which is really important, especially for rock. You know, nice amount of detail on on that. Great, cool. For now, I'm happy with that. Again, we'll see you as we go on. Excellent, thanks, Jake. Can we uh, can we get racked on, please? So I'm going to mute off the other channels for now, and then uh, start looking at the close mic of the rack. Um, this is just a 57 on both the both the toms. Okay, just going to pan it off a little bit over to the side to see what the position in the overhead should be to the left a little bit. Yeah. So I'm just using my pan to basically mirror image what I'm hearing in the overheads. Let's flip the phase on that. It's definitely got a nicer low end in. That works well for me now. Let's look at the floor. Great, and floor tom. So I'm going to just again mirror image that with the pan here. Just check the phase. Nice. Okay, great. Do you want to play around your whole kit for me? So I'm just going to see with the uh, bring the toms in with the kick and snare mics. See how it feels. So this is just the close mics. Again, at this point, kind of, see we've got these peak indicators on the preamps. I should be nowhere near the peak level really on these preamps. I tend to record a lot lower level than these preamps can go well above that happily. So uh, just gonna have a double check. I think that's good. At this point, while Joe's still playing, we we'll start bringing in the room mic as well which I've got, which is uh, an ADT, uh, ADK uh, large diaphragm condenser in Omni with a pad and a high pass filter on. So again, keeping the channel muted, phantom power in, and then just get a basic level. This is gonna be compressed pretty hard. This is, again, not the biggest room in the world, so we're not gonna get a kind of, you know, really 
overall natural kind of thing, from, big kind of room sound from this mic, so I'm going to be crushing it pretty heavily at some point. Nonetheless, it kind of gives a different perspective of the whole kit, which is quite nice. Once again, checking the phase with the overheads. Sounds about right to me. Now we're going to just check with the kick drum. Definitely. Check with the snare. Say that sounds good to me. Again, I'm in a relative balance. Let's check that level on that quickly, yeah. Joe's just getting a bit excited on that snare, so we're gonna bring that down. Just keeping an eye on this. Cool. So yeah, in the uh, in the balance of, of everything, it doesn't. Depending on the song and the part, it might not play a massive role. Anything kind of above a mid tempo, it's you know not going to have the room in the kind of speed between the beats to have any kind of particularly roomy sound. So bear that in mind. So we'll have a listen. So that's so what I'm now going to do is kind of start just applying some outboard um, just to gently kind of caress the signal and the sound just to kind of put, pull it more in line with what I want to be hearing before I hit, kind of hit hit tape or computer. Um, it's worth noting that kind of people have different schools of thought on processing before you record. You know, I think it's. You know, a lot of people like to think that maybe it's better to keep it kind of clean. I think there's definitely an argument for that. Um, but, you know, personally, I was always kind of taught and kind of learnt that to kind of try and get it as close to what you want as quickly as possible. So, uh, you know, bear in mind that this is just my personal way of working. I wouldn't say everyone has to work this way. And, you know, if you don't have the facilities or, or the kind of um, inclination to process on the way in, it's it's fine, you know. Not a problem. Okay, so I'm going to start with the kick drum. Great, thanks very much. Can I just, uh, can you just go back to playing kick for me again, please? So I'm going to have a look at this kick drum mic in again. Okay, so because we've got this kick out mic capturing a lot of the low end and the what I call the bloom of the sound, don't need as much in there really. We want to make more of a feature of that attack portion of the signal. So what I'm going to be doing is um, bringing in a, uh, uh, a dynamic process called a transient designer which is just going to kind of shape the uh, kind of the transient, I guess, of the kick drum. Um, and it can kind of instantly add some kind of interesting kind of things to it. So we're hearing that kick getting punchy straight away there with the attack, with the sustain, controlling that release. I'm not going mad with it, but I'm just bringing it up to kind of give the punch, cut down without, with. We're going to get a little bit of a level increase again, so I'm going to just use the uh, channel output pot just to kind of trim this down a bit on the desk. This that could be done with line the gain on the preamp as well, but I like to just gain stage things nicely. Okay, so I'm also going to bring in a bit of EQ on top of that as well. Um, just to cut out some, maybe some of the boxiness in there I've got from that mic. It's now coming on this Phoenix Audio EQ. Got an output level here. 
which is kind of variable, so it might change our gain a little bit. So we might have to, again, look at the relationship between that channel output pot and output on this EQ. So I'm going to start kind of having a sweep around and see what I like and what I don't like. Yeah, fixed frequency ponds is kind of just hit and hope a little bit. But instantly that preferring that just with that kind of a little bit notched out there. Again, let's look at maybe getting a little bit more of a cleaner note on that beta. Again, I think that sounds a bit better to me. Maybe just a touch of top. Okay, let's see how this plays with the kick. Out mic. Not too bad. Okay. It's uh, might be worth noting, uh, noting for the record that I'm uh, monitoring this on on headphones for the kind of sake of the the, the audio feed for the mic. Uh, that you're hearing me talk with, so it's kind of uh, changing my perspective a little. I'm used to working on speakers, so uh, bear that in mind. But um, let's go with that for now and see what happens. Great, and snare drum. Don't tend to like feel the need to kind of uh, go too mad with this snare. I think the, um, the the kind of coloration circuits on the preamp have really added a lot to it already, but. Probably all I'm going to do, again, it depends on what I was doing in the, for the actual song, but I'm just going to possibly look at just kind of maybe cutting out a little bit of that boxiness like you can hear on that mic. So I'm going to just put in the, another Phoenix Audio onto that snare and see what we like and what we don't like. We don't want to cut out all the kind of resonance down there. That's, that's what I don't like that I'm hearing. Just notch it out a little bit. Nice. Just having a touch up a mid, a touch of top. I don't want to go mad because it will introduce more kind of high at spill. Great. Okay, can we have a kick snow and high at? Sometimes I get drums to just play kick snow and high at stuff to check their levels because okay so without the uh, EQ on the snare that Sounds much better to me. Nice. Okay. And the last thing I think, um, again, I'd probably, uh, you know, in the context of things, probably uh, maybe EQ the toms a little bit, but just for the purposes of this video, I'm going to leave it for now. But I am going to process that room mic because I know that I'm going to want that smash. So, uh, so I'm just going to put some compression on that now. Going to uh, use this relatively cheap compressor. I quite like the sound of. Set to limiting, 25 to 1. Fastest attack and release. It's really getting destroyed. Let's have a listen. Let's do in up to 12 dB. Gain reduction on that. We can use the gain makeup to for after. Nice. Got some instant bigness coming on there. Kind of can cheat the size of the room a little bit with that mic, which I quite like. 
cool. So the next probably step that I would do is uh, maybe record some down and kind of have a listen back. So um, cool, Joe. If you um, if you just want to kind of play some stuff all around the kit, I'm going to record it down. You can come and have a listen to see see how it's sounding. So I've just got these tracks rooted into Nuendo and recording exactly what you're listening to. That's brilliant. Excellent. Thanks so much. So that was a demo quick demonstration of um, how I might use the 800 and what I do. Obviously, it was kind of for demonstration purposes, so some things kind of would have changed, but hopefully it's enough to give an idea of how versatile the preamp can be and how the unit can be used. So uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and thanks for checking it out.